In this presentation, we're going to look at what we use the energy from respiration for. Hopefully, by the end of this presentation, you should be able to state the way in which energy from respiration is used in both plants and animals. You should be able to state why there are differences in the use of energy between different types of animal. And you should be able to apply your knowledge of the use of energy to different situations. So, aerobic respiration. The whole point of respiration is to get out energy at the end. We have our reactants, which are glucose and oxygen, and then our products. One which we want, which is energy, and then two which we don't, carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide and water are termed waste products. They're produced, but we don't need them. So once we've got this energy, what do we actually do with it? Well, the first one is muscle contraction. I'm sure you're all aware that you need energy to be able to exercise. That's because that energy is used to make the muscles contract. So whenever you're doing any sort of movement or exercise, some muscles are contracting. Now when you're exercising, your muscles are obviously working a lot harder. Therefore they need to respire more. That is why your heart rate and breathing rate increase. They're trying to get an increased supply of glucose and oxygen to your cells so that more energy can be produced. A second use for the energy is what's called biosynthesis. Now synthesis just means making bigger things from smaller things. Biosynthesis is the process of making larger biological molecules from smaller ones. This is not as complicated as it sounds. For instance, you should all have heard of proteins. Now they're made from smaller molecules called amino acids. So putting these amino acids together to make the proteins is termed biosynthesis. Now this is the first step for making new cells. And we need new cells all the time. When we're little, we're growing and obviously need, need many new cells. But even when we're fully grown, we're constantly replacing cells. For instance, our skin is replaced on a quite a regular basis. You'll notice sometimes when you get out of the shower or the bath that parts of your skin are coming off. That's because those skin cells have died and they're constantly being replaced with new ones. Also, if we've ever injured ourselves, you're a cut or a break, some of those cells will be damaged. And for that wound to heal, we need to replace those cells. We need to make new ones. And all these cells are able to be made because energy is going into biosynthesis, making new biological molecules, which will then go on to make the new cells. Now, it's not just animals that use energy from respiration for biosynthesis. Plants also use energy in this way. For instance, the amino acids, which animals use to make up proteins, are actually made in plants. Plants use molecules such as nitrates and other nutrients to actually build amino acids. These then go on to make proteins. So biosynthesis occurs in both plants and animals. A third one is regulating temperature, or to give it its proper name, thermoregulation. Now this only occurs in warm-blooded animals, for instance mammals, birds. This doesn't happen in cold-blooded animals, such as reptiles. Now in warm-blooded animals, our body temperature is kept at a 
fairly constant level at about 30, for humans, mammals about 37 degrees. In birds it tends to be a bit higher, about 42. But if our body temperature deviates from this number by more than a couple of degrees, we will be in serious trouble. For instance, if our body temperature falls to about 35, we could go into hypothermia and could potentially die. Just like if we go up to 38 degrees, we can start getting a fever. And even more than 39 or 40 degrees, again, can lead to us actually dying. This is because all the chemical reactions in our body require our body to be at a certain temperature. So, if our body temperature starts to deviate from 37, those processes aren't going to work properly. So the, some of the energy from respiration goes into maintaining our body temperature. For instance, most of the time, the air around us is colder than 37 degrees. So we need to use the energy to make sure our body temperature stays at 37 degrees Celsius. So hopefully, you're now aware of ways in which energy from restoration is used in both plants and animals. Should be able to state why there are differences in use of energy between different types of animal. And hopefully you'll be able to apply your knowledge of the use of energy to different situations. Now remember to fill in the homework sheet and to bring it in next lesson.